All right. There we go. There's there Miss. There we go. Okay. Welcome, everybody, to Recovery Talks. I'm here with Brian, and he's uh, doing our IT stuff, and he's also co hosting here. Um, this program is put on by Cipriano and Johnson. They're our sponsors, and the objective here is to get to know the resources that are in our community. And one such resource is Dan Renaud in Recovery School, and we've got two episodes with him just because he has so much to offer. So just for the people that weren't here last week, Dan, you want to just like touch on exactly a little bit about Recovery School, and then you had a couple of other people to talk. Yeah, so the Recovery School is a, an organization that we began back in 2014, uh, 14 to 19-year-olds uh, struggling with substance use issues, behavioral health challenges uh, that uh, are seeking help with that and trying to stay in school and finish school. And so we offer a full academic program leading to graduation. Uh, we're part of the Duval County public school system. We're also a private school and we also have other academic options available depending on where the youth is like the GED or a vocational certificate. So there's lots of things that the kids can do to ultimately matriculate uh, and move on to whatever's next in their development. Right. So, uh, and then all of this is offered for free as far as the academics go. And then we have a full clinical component that goes with it, which is individual and group counseling, as well as access to uh, medical care, uh, housing assistance, job placement, et cetera. And, uh, and so uh, that's also offered free of charge. Well, good morning, Jamari. Good morning. So, uh, so Jamari is our, uh, she is a social worker. She's been with us for uh, about uh, almost a year, I guess. But you've been with, have you been with us a year already? Uh -huh. Wow. Uh, time flies when you're having fun. She'll tell you it was probably like 10 years, but she's only been here for a year. And uh, she is bilingual uh, and uh, a young lady who is incredibly bright. And uh, we're very excited to have her. She's heading up our community outreach and our uh, uh, going and doing direct work in the school system, uh, trying to reach kids there. And uh, she uh, targets the Hispanic community, which has a lot of particular challenges right now, obviously for a lot of reasons that we're not gonna get into here, but certainly uh, very important work. And she's also uh, co-directing and facilitating our newest endeavor, which is our Hispanic Center, which has opened. And that will be uh, providing job, clothing, uh, housing, um, uh, English language training, et cetera, for uh, families that have been displaced and are coming to this country as new arrivals and looking to, uh, you know, make a fresh start here. So uh, and Jamari uh, is her and a, another gentleman are, are taking that on and doing a great work with there. So uh, that's really what we do, uh, a lot of what we do. And, um, you know, we uh, will serve probably 700 families this year in the community. Wow. And so we're, you know, very excited about that. And uh, we're always looking for donations. So you can donate if you would like to www.floridarecoveryschools.org or you can call me 904-864-6463. That's our number. Um, and then Florida Recovery Schools is uh, really the name. And uh, and so I would I would love to maybe get Jamari involved and see if you can talk to her. Uh, she has a lot of great uh, stuff to share and maybe have her uh, uh, share a little about what she's doing and uh, and the great things that her and her team are doing in the community to reach young people and families uh, that are, uh, you know, encountering a lot of challenges. Great. That is awesome. You know, we were talking about statistics last week and the adolescent use was up like 52%. It was quite scary. Um, so you know, definitely need it now. Jamari, uh, so let us, tell us a little bit about you and what you do then. So, like Dan says, um, I have a master on clinical social work, bilingual. So a little bit of what I do is I go out of on the community and I just push doors. I see like to check how people is doing, if they have needs, how I can help them. And, you know, also provide them like, you know, the support that they may need because come to this country without don't know the language like I came here without the we don't know the language too so it's been hard for me 
try to learn the language, understand this community, and try to help the people who come from another Hispanic communities. Because every Hispanic community is different. Being in this place is the, like change us a lot. So I try to help them on the way that this change be more easier for them. So I I just when I go out, I just check what are those needs and I try to put the, all those services together. So when I go back, I have what they need. Can I ask a question? So I'm Brian. Nice to meet you. So what what I wanted to know was like what are the like what are the things that you see the most when you're going out there and the outreach um, that you you think are most important? What are you providing that's the most important thing to people who are are just coming here? So I think one of the biggest stuff that I see when I go out is that people don't have no stability and also they don't have form to learn how this country work. They don't know how go to found resources. They don't they don't know where are those places that I can go to receive help. They they don't know and this is that is so bad because when you have hungry and you don't know where to go to find some food or when you need a job or learn the language and you don't know where to go or when you go to a place you don't find nobody who can understand your language, it's kind of hard for them because that keep you behind all the time. Great. That's excellent. Um, I just wanted to also ask, uh, do you have any statistics on uh, what type of sobriety needs are in the Hispanic community? I mean, do, what do you see? Are there a lot of people abusing alcohol or drugs or, or what's, what's going on? What I see the most is a lot of mental health and a lot of alcohol. There's a lot of alcoholism out there, a lot, on the Hispanic community. Yeah. We find the same thing because we actually have an adult Hispanic uh, Eddie uh, runs that we're doing now, and uh, we could probably team one, up. One of the things, them. Brian, that's that's really uh, that really kind of pushed this movement was we got a statistic from uh, from uh, some research that was done by another group, um, which I don't have in front of me right now, but I, I could certainly supply the, the data point. But essentially, pointed to the fact that in Duval County. Uh, we have the highest utilization of heroin among the adolescent female Hispanic population in the United States. Wow. Uh, in that group, we are the number one in the country. And uh, we believe that has to do with targeting, I mean, uh, trafficking. And uh, the kids are being trafficked uh, at a very, at an alarming rate. And uh, they're using heroin as a way to control the, the youth and, uh, and other drugs. And so uh, that was really the impetus behind this. Uh, and so having worked with kids and young adults uh, pretty much all my life, I mean, I've been doing this since I was, you know, in my 20s and I'm 56 now, Terry. I just turned 56. <laughs> and uh, and so I've been doing this a long time. Jamari, that laughing is not helping your case at all. Just want to let you know. Um, <laughs> but the uh, so we put together this team and we started working with the trafficking folks, uh, the sheriff's office, the mayor, the office of the mayor. Uh, and the probation folks, and uh, you know, Jamari's out there going knocking door to door, and we're we're making a difference. I mean, we, we're, you're working with, what 30, 40 families in the community right now, and and then we've got uh, the Hispanic Center. Uh, we fed 40 families Thanksgiving. Uh, we fed another uh, Friday night. We probably gave out uh, about three thousand dollars worth of food that was donated by Trader Joe's, and uh, to the Hispanic community. And, uh, and so we continue to do those type of events. Uh, but really, Brian, what we're working on and, and really targeting is those young uh, Hispanics, uh, youth, that teenage youth that's being targeted uh, and, and aggressively uh, victimized uh, by predators that are using them for uh, sex workers uh, against their will, as well as, um, uh, you know, you, uh, you, uh, using drugs to do that. And so that's really the group that we're going after and helping the families while we're there. 
I, I appreciate that. And I think that everything that you guys are doing is very worthwhile. Um, and I know that Terry does too, as, as yes, does Cibriana yeah. Johnson. Thank you. Um, unfortunately, we have, uh, we want to keep this short. We hope that you guys are going to come back in uh, and talk to us a little bit. I'm going to let Terry wrap up with you guys real quick. Um, part two coming up uh, very soon. Okay, I promise. Very nice to meet you. Okay. Thank you, Brian. Now, is the, the Hispanic part, uh, Dan, is that located with you, you know, downtown with you at your place? 23 West 8th Street. Mm -hmm. Jamari, can you in Spanish please let everyone know that where it is, what it is, and, and just a real quick kind of commercial about what we're doing there, just in Spanish. Yes, yeah, sure. Um, so, nosotros estamos localizados aquí en el downtown, en el 23 West, eh, calle 8, Jacksonville. Eh, nosotros ofrecemos servicios para la comunidad hispana de, le, de la ciudad de Jacksonville que necesiten coordinación de servicios de vivienda, coordinación de servicios de alimentos, eh, donación de um, ropa y salud mental. Awesome. <laughs> Great job. Well, I'm so glad we found out about that. And that's an excellent program too, along with the recovery school, trying to reach an audience that's going to be our future. We need somebody to pay our social security, right, Dan? <laughs> got it. Somebody's got to take care. We've been taking care of everybody a long time, Terry. Somebody's got to take care of us. That's right. That's right. Anyway, thank you both then for joining us. Um, the recovery school is doing great things, so we'll be seeing more of you, Dan. And also want to say hope to see you at the pizza party. We're still planning on having that so far on the 20th. That'll be at the Palms Presbyterian Church, and that's Can't great I'll networking. Wait. I'm so excited. We'll bring the whole team. Yeah, I was going to say, Jeremy, I hope she's there too. And um, we'll definitely introduce you to some people. And I'd really like for you and Eddie to meet because he's the one handling the Spanish part of our program. So it'll work out good. Thank you so much for the opportunity to do this. And we look forward to uh, coming back at any time. All right, Thank you right. so much. Thanks, Bye, guys. everybody. Thank All you right. for coming. All right. Bye. Bye.